Hi and welcome to this episode of the Tech F1 show. In this episode we're looking back at Singapore, the night race, which is obviously a high downfall circuit, street circuit, uh, very much a, a contrast to the last two circuits that we visited where they're what we would classify as classic circuits, um, medium to low downforce at Spa and extremely low downforce at Monza. So obviously the, this particular circuit would require a drastic change in the ethos that the teams would use. Um, and also the, the way that the drivers actually approach the circuit. So if we take a look firstly at, at Red Bull Racing, obviously they dominated the Grand Prix through Sebastian Vettel. Um, his pace was pretty awesome to be perfectly honest compared to the rest of the field. You know, at one stage it was, you, you could have seen that he would have lapped everybody had the safety car not come out, so it's a pretty dominant performance. Obviously Mark Webber had the issue at the end of the race um, and obviously went on to pick up the reprimand that's, that's now um, clear in the mind of everybody uh, with Weber really not happy with the way that that went down. Uh, I can see why the FIA did what they did and that was purely based upon the fact that uh, it was a dangerous scenario for the, the driver to be crossing the track at the end of the race um, and be picked up by Fernando. I know it's happened in the past but the problem is not the fact that Fernando gave Weber a, a lift, it was more to do with the fact that um, he crossed the, the track and Weber was in a position, uh, Alonso was in a position on the track that needed avoidable action from the Mercedes that were, were coming up from behind. But obviously if we move on to the technical side of things again, uh, firstly let's have a look at the, the rear end of the Red Bull. Um, several changes here from obviously what we've seen over the last few races. We've got the re-adoption of the monkey seat in the Y75 area of the, the rear, rear wing just here and attached to the beam wing. Now a monkey seat is used to aid in attachment at the rear wing um, because obviously you, you're running much higher angles of attack. You need to be able to get more airflow to the rear of the wing to make it more efficient. Also what we've got in the new Red Bull package was a new diffuser gurney. Um, the old gurney was literally attached to the periphery of the diffuser here um, and, and in this particular section we've got a perforated version so the perforation goes from the tip all the way to the, the other tip of the, the diffuser um, it's just a way of further extracting more downforce from the, the exterior sections of the diffuser um, it's something that gets changed on a regular basis by the teams and this is just what the team have decided to operate with at uh, Singapore. As we can see this is the older version as I've just mentioned the periphery of the, the diffuser gurney here is, is attached and doesn't have the perforation. Um, this is from Spa or Monza, no it's actually from Monza and you can see the, the flavies that was used to see, to see what was going on with that particular version of the, uh, the diffuser that they ran at that race. Moving back to the the front wing or the front of the car, uh, they've gone back to a, a wing that is reminiscent of what we saw at Spa. Obviously in Monza we saw that the cascade arrangements were, were taken away uh, because the, the team were trying to reduce as much drag as possible. Um, but what's interesting about this particular wing is that it's more of a, a, a throwback to earlier the earlier part of the season and that is because we've lost the vertical strakes that were on the main plane and the flaps ahead of the, the strakes that fit behind the rear wing section, uh, front wing section. Um, so it's just a, a going back for, for Red Bull. Uh, they've taken a different approach to this Grand Prix and feel that they didn't need those um, little strakes. Uh, they're obviously there to help with the, the airflow that's received by the strakes at the rear of the front wing and also to stop the, the clutter of um, tyre marbles. Um, a look at the, the car overall and we can see that Red Bull have moved back to the hammerhead position on the nose cone. Um, again that's something that promotes more downforce. Um, over recent races where they've wanted to reduce drag they've had the FOM cameras mounted much further back here towards the suspension components. Also what you'd notice is the fact that they've, the Pelican underbelly, although it's very small on the, the Red Bull version, is is back in there um, and obviously we can see here that the quite steep and aggressive angle of attack that they're running on, on the rear wing. Of 
obviously to try and counter the fact of how much the the, uh, the drag is created on that particular high downforce configuration. They've got multiple louvres in the end plates and also the V groove that appears in the top flap. So moving on to Ferrari, now they're a team that took a huge co uh, amount of components to, to Singapore. Um, I wasn't expecting teams to perhaps throw the kitchen sink at Singapore just purely because it's a, a track that's high downforce and there's only a few of those on the calendar. Um, Monaco and Hungary and Singapore being the, the major contri contributors so I wasn't expecting massive upgrades to, to be coming through from the teams but Ferrari have obviously come with a, quite a few different pieces. Um, what they did was a new front wing, uh, this was only raced on Alonso's car qualifying in the race and what you find is that the, um, the, main, the main plane at the secondary section goes all the way to the inner portion of the the main plane and then the top flaps also come across um, to meet with the, the, the inner section. Um, usually there's a, there's a section here that, that cuts short and the whole section here is completely full, there's no perforation that allows the air flow inwards. Um, that, that's the mark of a much higher downfall shielding front wing. Um, tied to that as well you've also got a, a new arrangement on the, the, the upper flaps, this is a much shallower um, section than the older wing configuration so um, they're obviously trying to play one off the other where the, the, the upper flaps are, are reducing a little bit of drag but um, they were definitely trying to gain some extra downforce from that new front wing. Um, this is the older configuration wing as I say you've got the, the main plane section here is completely um, devoid of any perforations that lead outwards to the, the end plate there and obviously the, the upper flaps are, are shaped much differently. Uh, looking here at uh, the, the car in full, uh, we've got the complete configuration on Alonso's car and he's running the new front wing, um, the new rear wing and new brake ducts at the rear. What the team also did was they were playing around with exhaust configurations, uh, the bodywork around the exhausts in the semi-commander arrangement. Um, I, it appears that they perhaps ran an asymmetric design um, which is not perhaps totally aerodynamic um, it could be to do with the packaging on one side of the side part um, but uh, in this particular picture we can see that the team are running flavies on the front wing um, they also had it sprayed on the side part and also at the rear of the car whereas on this side of the car they decided to run with a pitot tube array um, just to measure the the airflow that was going in and, in and around the side pod there. In contrast on Felipe's car we can see that he's running the older wing configuration uh, front wing and he's got flow vis applied to the, the, the floor here. We can see how the, the vis visually how the airflow is moving across the floor. Um, there's several pictures which I'm going to put up in the show notes which is a new feature of the, the program. Um, if you visit the website, which the link will be on the YouTube um, page as well, then you'll be able to see from my website where the other pictures that are associated with, with what I'm talking about. Um, Felipe also ran a, uh, an array at the rear of the car to establish what was going on with the diffuser. Um, and as I said, I'll pop, pop that up on the, uh, the show notes. But as you can see just here in the section here, it's a pitot tube array that's aimed at the, the diffuser, understanding what's going on with the diffuser and how much the extraction is working. We can see here that Ferrari also adopted a, a monkey seat, uh, again because they're running high angles of attack on the rear wing, they need to uh, get more, more air flow to the rear section of the wing to make it efficient. And this is the new brake duct that we see on the Ferrari F138. Um, it's sprayed here with flow visualization, flow visualization. Um, difficult word to get out of that one. And the new brake duct only features one slot in the, the top fit, whereas over the last season I think they've been running with the, the three um, perforations in the, in the top section of the, the brake duct there. There's also another fin um, mounted horizontally just in this section here, so usually there's one fin and the top fin and 
top fin usually has um, three perforations rather than the one that we see here on this particular picture. Moving on to Mercedes, now they're a team that didn't perhaps put much more effort into their um, high downforce configuration package for, for Singapore. Um, it's much the same package that we saw back at Hungary. Um, so we, we're moving back to um, the little um, R cascade that comes off of the end plate and onto the, um, onto the flaps here. That helps to navigate the airflow around the front tyre. Um, and also we move back to the old end plates here which have the smaller tyre wake uh, slots. That's obviously, they were using the, the, the big ones for, for Monza to try and help with uh, reducing drag. Here's a picture of the, the front wing uh, assembly and we can see that the team were once again trialling out with their infrared um, thermal imaging cameras just to see what's going on with the, the tyres around uh, such a demanding circuit. But also here's a much more clearer picture of the R, -ca R cascade that I mentioned that sits behind their normal cascade. Their cascade in comparison to a lot of teams it, it is quite far forward on the, the end plate and so I believe that's the reason why they've added this additional cascade at the, the rear section it's just so that they can get the airflow to as it's going underneath the front cascade they've still got airflow that can work at the rear. Moving on to Lotus, another team that perhaps haven't put a mass effort into their uh, Singapore package purely because obviously their, their car works within a quite a wide operating window anyway. Um, the lung wheelbase version that they tried to bring forward for um, Monza was delayed purely because the FIA had some issues over the way that they'd worked the tea tray area etc. Um, so that won't now be introduced into, until Korea or the team obviously wanted to introduce it for Singapore but it wasn't available. So realistically the team really only concentrated on additional cooling um, and the rest of the package was bits and pieces that are made up from earlier packages sort of from Hungary where we got the Pelican nose and the uh, FOM cameras mounted underneath that in the um, central section of the nose um, underneath the, the pillars or between the, the pillars um, and just a high angle of attack rear wing. As we can see here they've opened up a little bit of extra cooling around the rear end uh, to aid with the high temperatures that are seen around Singapore um, but apart from that it was pretty much the same package that we would have seen around about uh, Hungary perhaps I can't remember whether they had the, the shark fin uh, back at Hungary uh, but I will look into that and uh, if it wasn't the shark fin perhaps put the picture up at, uh, in the show notes and moving on to McLaren um, a team that have obviously stated that they are now really in full swing for 2014 development and so they're not bringing too much of a, a development package to each Grand Prix um, to be expected where they are in the championship you know they're, they're, there's no chance that they can catch up with some of the league teams so they might as well focus their development now on next year um, they, did, they are obviously still bringing some, some developments to each race and they're track specific so uh, things that have been worked on and uh, throughout the season and, and will be included within the run um, anyway so firstly the, the track specific upgrades that I noticed on the McLaren for this race weekend are the beam wing has found itself a new curved element in the Y75 um, region which is just below the monkey seats and will obviously help with how that creates attachment to the rear wing um, and it creates additional downforce. Um, I'm quite sure there were some changes around the rear brake ducts as well. Uh, this is something that all of the teams try to, to make changes around it each particular circuit just to change the characteristics of how the downforce is created in that area um, and another area that the team were playing with was the um, vortex generators above the side pod inlet so we've got three in this particular picture and that's the configuration that they've run over the last few races now for anybody that doesn't understand vortex generators what they actually do is they agitate the airflow as it goes across the, across the side pod or down the side pod and into the downwash um, towards the exhaust um, they help to trim the airflow in that particular region so that 
um, the, the, the side pod can work in a much wider operating window. Obviously, the bodywork on all of the cars is in a is in a fixed position. Um, obviously, otherwise it would be a movable aerodynamic device, and so. Um, the side pods can realistically only work within a specified uh, window and then beyond that you, you have to introduce things like um, slats and, and um, vortex generators to help agitate the airflow um, and make them work more efficiently at different speeds. So this is to help the, the car work at a different speed threshold and what the team were, were doing um, was also trying out with the, the the four vortex generators as we can see here on Jensen's car on the side pod. Um, now obviously there's only so much airflow that you can get into that region, it doesn't change. Um, so those, whether you choose three or four, two, three, four, however many vortex generators you put there, all you're doing is agitating the same amount of air um, and creating vortices that roll, it, roll down um, the side pod here. So it's a marginal decision as to which option you take, three or four. Um, and that's it for the Singapore edition of the Tech F1 show. I'd like to say thank you to Sutton Images as always for providing me such brilliant technical images. Without them it would be difficult to explain everything that goes on. Um, and we look forward to the next racing career.